Hey, there's Asante here from the Tech Muse Academy with another MixLessons.com video quick tip. Um, this is a, a question I get asked from time to time in regards to Cubase in particular, but other DAWs will, will function in a similar manner. And that is, what's the difference between an instrument track and a MIDI track, and when might be appropriate to choose one or the other? So let's take a quick look at Cubase right now to hopefully illustrate the difference and give you some, uh, some information on why you might want to choose a MIDI track over an instrument track. Now, in most cases, cases, an instrument track is the preferred method of working because it's quick, it's easy, and it's efficient. So an, an instrument track essentially is just a MIDI track with a VST instrument already connected to it. Okay, so, so basically you've got a MIDI track, you've got the instrument already on it, you can just go ahead and hit record and start jamming your parts into your DAW. Okay, um, and if I were to create an instrument track right now, there's an instrument track, I'm going to choose an instrument, let's grab Halion Sonic and we'll add that track. Um, there it is, it pops right up right there. I can go ahead and hit record. And it's done, just like that. I can go back and have a listen to what I just did. And there it is. So. That's the idea with an instrument track. It's just a very quick and easy way, sort of a, a, so almost like a macro, you know, where, you, where you've got a couple of steps that are taken care of from one single keystroke. I've done a video about that in the past. Feel free to search for shortcuts and macros in Cubase. Um, but this is like a quicker way of working, and it's very useful, and I use it all the time. Now, what if I wanted to, um, uh, let's say, create a drum part? Uh, pr program some drums, but I want to um, I want each of the kit pieces to be on their own track. Now, if I did this with instrument tracks, what, what I would have to do is I would create an instrument track. Um, I'd choose my drum sampler. I would then go ahead and record my kick drum part. Then I'd create another instrument track again, choose my drum sampler and record my snare drum part. Now, the end result would be very similar. The difference is is that now there's in order to process the kick and the snare, there are actually two instances of that VST instrument running. So it's going to drain a little more off your system resources, okay? So a better way to do this would be to install or instantiate the instrument in the VST instrument rack instead, and then send use multiple MIDI channels sending, or MIDI tracks, excuse me, being sent to that one instance of the plugin that will still give you that separation and control. Let me show you what I mean. So this time, if I open up the instrument rack, I've got Groove Agent 1 already set up and ready to go here. I've also got an instance of Halion Sonic, and we'll get to that in a moment. So now what I can do, because that instrument is already uh, available, I can go ahead and create some MIDI tracks. I'm going to grab, uh, let's say, three of them right now. Now Cubase automatically mapped their outputs to the first instrument in the rack. How convenient. So I don't have to do that. But if I wanted to send this track to the other instrument, I could simply go ahead here and change it to Halion Sonic SC in this case. So what I'll do is I'll call this kick snare, and hats, okay? Now I'm able to go ahead and record the individual parts. Um, let's start with the snare drum and see what we can do. Okay, so there's some snare right there. And now let's go ahead and add in some kick drum. I'm just going to go back to the top. <laughs> let's try that one more time. So it looks like my quantize has moved one of my notes to the wrong spot. So let's go ahead and fix that. There we go. There's another one. Whoops, there we go. Now we'll have some semblance of time. <laughs> And the reason why it's done that is I've got my quantized value set to uh, something too fine, so it's moving some notes the wrong way. But that will do. So let's add in a little bit of hi-hat here. First of all, 
Where is my hi-hat? There it is. Okay, and now I've got a little bit of a, of a, a groove that is desperately out of time, <laughs> but you get the idea, okay? So that's, again, now if I want to, I can solo my kick drum, and I can process it independently from the rest of the kit pieces, but together I get the uh, entire groove. So that's an example of why you might want to, um, to use one VST instrument instantiated into the instrument rack and have multiple tracks sent to that instrument, okay? Um, another example of that, let's actually just go through and remove all of that amazing music I just created. And this time what we're going to do is I'm going to add, um, let's say, four MIDI tracks. We're going to add those tracks. This time I'm going to send them all to Halley and Sonic. We'll go to these to Halley and Sonic, which is also in my rack. And if I open that up here, I can see it. Now, what I've got is um, a few different in, uh, instruments uh, opened up here because this is a multi-voice instrument. Let's grab some drums, too, and we'll put a little piece together. Let's see. Jazz kit? Sure. Let's try the jazz kit. All right. Now, each of these instruments is on its own MIDI channel. Now, as some of you may know, um, MIDI supports 16 different channels, and that's why we've got 16 slots here. So I could load in 16 different instruments, in different sounds, rather, in this one VST instrument, and I could then create MIDI tracks and assign them to the appropriate channels. So if we look at our tracks over here, let's take MIDI track number one, and let's send it to our, our drum kit, which is channel four. So I can go down here, choose channel four, and now this is going to be my drums and let's just check it out there it is okay so let's record some quick drums here this time i'll try to be a little more in time okay and i'm going to put my uh, click track on so i can hear that okay so we've got a little bit of drums there um, let's take the second one here and send it to, well, first let's see what instruments we got. So we've got a bass on channel one. So let's put that on channel one. Call that bass. Now, because I just changed it to channel one, that's what we're going to hear is the bass. Okay. So let's go over to the top and record a little bass. And now we've got some bass. And if I take the next channel here, open it up, we've got an organ on channel two. So let's try that out. Let's go organ. Change that to channel two. And sure enough, I have organ. So let's throw in a little organ. And now I've got a little organ in there. And last but not least, let's actually set up a little loop here. Our last channel is, let's see, we've got the suitcase electric piano on channel three. So we got our electric piano, and there it is. So now I can go ahead and uh, jam over top of my, uh, my rhythm section with my electric piano. Let's give it a little go there. Okay. And that is another example as to why you might want to use MIDI tracks instead of a VST instrument channel. So I hope that makes sense to you, and I hope you can look beyond my poor playing, and, uh, and we'll see you on the next quick tip.